Uh, hello everyone, my name is Adona. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is very cool that uh, we can get together like this from different parts of our world and talk about quantum technologies, quantum computers, and talk about ourselves and uh, our road to quantum science. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this introduction to me, Dennis. I see many people connecting yet, and let me start today uh, my speech. First of all, I would like to thank so much the organizers of this Women in Quantum Summit Force. Dennis, thank you very much for the invitation and such wonderful opportunity for all women. It is really brings people together and helps to establish our context. Uh, so let's beginning. I'm sharing my slides, just a second, about today. As I said, my name is Alona and I'm from Russia, Moscow. And as I saw here, I'm the only woman from Russia who is a speaker today. This is very pleasant for me. I would like to tell you about myself, about uh, science, about my life road to quantum computing, as well as give an idea of science, quantum science in Russia. Uh, what I would like to start my story with is uh, that there is such a phrase in Russia that a real Russian woman will stop a stampeding horse and will enter a burning house. These are words from the poem of the great Russian poet Nikolai Nikrasov. He wrote uh, this in 1863 year. At the present time, it can be added that the real Russian woman in science, of course, will build a quantum computer. It's funny and very little. It is one of the milestones of modern science in general. I think that each of us here today is inspired by this task, applies our knowledge and skills in order to solve it. Absolutely all women in the world who are engaged in quantum technologies are interested in building a quantum computer. And of course, this is, is not all that is being developed now in the modern scientific community. The development of science and its it popularization is also one of the important goals. Mm. Let me tell you a little more about myself. Uh, I was born in Russia, Moscow, and I studied at school at, at the university in Moscow. Uh, since school, I was very interested in exact science. I have always been inspired and attracted by mathematics, chemistry, physics, and already in high school, I took the first steps towards scientific work, participated and won in competition in physics. I graduated in physics from the Bauman Moscow State Technical University. My bachelor's project was devoted to the study of the decoherence of many body quantum systems. It was at the university in the first year of uh, that I realized that I was attracted to quantum physics. And what exactly inspired me to the science, what helped to always study and move forward. Uh, this is what I want to tell you a little about now, about my hobbies in life, which helped me so, so much. Let's move a little away from quantum technology towards sports, and then, of course, back to science. At the age of six, I started to practice Karate Kyokushin. I trained for 12 years. Now I'm already doing other sports, uh, and for 12 years, Karate has taught me achieve my goals, always go forward, never stop, work hard and hard, and uh, most importantly, work in a team. After all, martial arts also unite people around the world like science. Uh, in a sense, Karate requires from you a superposition of states. This is concentration and pure mind. This is somewhat reminds me of the operation of a quantum computer, the elementary units of which are qubits. Such quantum phenomena as a quantum superposition and entanglement, of course, uh, play a very important role here to perform computation. Uh, also, a state of pure mind and concentration gives you unlimited opportunities to train your body and train your mind. Uh, throughout my life, it helps me helps me to work in science and understand many scientific concepts. Now I want to tell you about my start in science. 
and my started science was almost immediately from quantum physics. I realized that this area is so beautiful, still completely unexplored, that many more discoveries can be made that will shock the world. Uh, here are some of my research paper. It's Physical Review A and New Journal of Physics that my colleagues and I have published from our research group. And uh, my work now in the, this field of quantum information technology in a broad sense. My areas of interest now uh, quantum computing, quantum information technologies and quantum machine learning. Uh, so. Uh, I want to tell you a little about the place uh, where I work now and where my scientific career began for several years ago. I am a junior researcher at the Russian Quantum Center. This is a young and modern scientific center which was founded in 2010 and an active stage started in 2012. Uh, the Russian Quantum Center RQC is a unique for Russian non-profit science and technology center that uh, in a short time has taken leading position in its field of research. Uh, now, uh, Russian Quantum Center has 14 scientific groups, uh, both experimental and theoretical, and 12 laboratories. More than 200 researchers and engineers from both Russia and all over the world work in RQC. It is very notable that the uh, number of women in research teams is growing every year. Now it is about 20% of all scientists and another interesting fact is that the average age of researchers is uh, 34 years. These are very, very young people and it is very, very cool. Uh, there are several goals in RQC. First, uh, making discoveries in the amazing quantum world and creating new technologies based on it. Uh, attracting the best minds from around the world and training uh, its own highly qualified specialist, becoming a national prototype of a new type of research institution, and promoting the rise of Russian science and the integration of Russian scientific community with the international one. And now the Russian Quantum Center is located in the Skolkovo Innovation Center uh, on the territory of the Skolkovo Institute of Science and Technology. This is shown in the picture. And the Russian Quantum Center combines several fields of science. Uh, they are all involved in quantum technologies. Uh, it has inspired me every day to go ahead and do science. The scientific group in which I work is called the Group of Quantum Information Technology. The head, the head of our scientific group, as well as my scientific advisor, is Alexey Fedorov. He is uh, a talented young professor of MIPT and PhD in theoretical physics. There are a lot of participants in our scientific group, more than 20 people. Uh, here I would like to mark my scientific advisors and people from whom I study. So, uh, Evgeny Kektenko, my bachelor's supervisor, a person who also became a guide for me to the world of quantum information technologies and quantum physics. And I am very grateful to these people for my knowledge and skills, for helping me overcome difficulties and showing me how welcoming science can be for a woman. There are four women working in our theoretical group now. There are bachelors, masters and PhD students. And uh, we are glad to absolutely everyone who wants to contribute to quantum computing and explore new frontiers on, of the unknown. Uh, the group is investigating the potential of quantum system in terms of its use in information technology. Uh, our group has developed new protocols and post-processing algorithms for quantum communication system, as well as new approaches to quantum information processing. And we also study the potential of classical machine learning to describe quantum phenomena and possible acceleration of machine learning algorithms through the use of quantum computing. We work closely with colleagues uh, from the University of Oxford, Center for Quantum Technologies in Singapore and Skoltia. Uh, now I am a master's student at the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology and uh, of 
Applied Quantum Technologies program. And this is really what I like uh, now and what I want to do in the future. Now I'm, I'm engaged in the topic of scientific research, which is relevant for entire world scientific community, uh, building a scalable quantum computer that will solve usefully applied problems is a very difficult task and colossal efforts are being made to solve it uh, as we know it is enough just to increase the number of qubits in the quantum system in order to build a quantum computer at the same time we also need to control the interaction between qubits as well as mitigate errors that arise in the process of their interaction uh, with the outside world such errors uh, occur during the decoherence processes. Uh, now I am engaged in theoretical research in the field of study the process of decoherence in many qubits or many body quantum systems. Uh, so uh, today there are a lot of platforms for building a quantum processor. There are photonics and trapped ions and superconductors and annealing and spin quantum dots and uh, neutral atoms, etc. In general, there are many, many technologies. Uh, the actual problem uh, here is the theoretical description of how the system behaves depending on many, many influences on it, in particular the effects of decoherence and the practical verification of the theories put forward. I am working in this research as well as many, many researchers uh, from all over the world. So now I would like to talk about science in a slightly different aspect. I talk to you about popularizing science and why it is needed. Now more and more people are interested in quantum technology. Uh, the field of quantum technologies itself is expanding uh, more and more and requires more research resources that need to be attracted. Now more people are interested in quantum technologies uh, and more and more students and school children are now interested in quantum science and IT field. Uh, master classes and schools on quantum computing and quantum programming are held all over the world. Some of these schools have already been talked about at this Women in Quantum Summit. For example, students will take a full year course called Qubit by Qubit's Introduction to Quantum Computing. Uh, I think this is a very important aspect of the development science and technology. I recently gave a lecture on quantum algorithms and quantum programming to the school children. Uh, we programmed on a real IBM quantum 5 qubit superconducting processor via Qiskit. And it is very cool that there is such an opportunity for someone to teach you, show you how to do it, and maybe inspire you with his vibe. I myself all continue to study programming on a quantum computer and I took part in the IBM Quantum Challenge this fall. Mm, this, may, uh, this was my first time participating in the IBM Quantum Challenge and I am very glad that I was able to overcome all tasks with the help of mentors and my colleagues. Now I can say that I have improved my programming skill on a quantum computer. Now I would like to talk about the Russian quantum technologies roadmap. Uh, many leading countries in quantum computing as well as individual companies are now making roadmaps for the development of quantum technologies. Uh, this year such a roadmap was adopted in Russia. An excellent article was published about the development of uh, quantum technologies in Russia in the journal Quantum Science and Technology. It is perspective and the article was written by key researchers who will be implementing the roadmap in Russia. All the main stages and milestones in this development were reflected. Uh, leads the roadmap for quantum technologies in Russia is the woman Ekaterina Sonceva, chef digital officer 
and the roadmap for building a quantum computer in Russia has been adopted and active research is underway. I'm very happy that I can be a small part of such a large project and contribute uh, to the construction of a quantum computer and the development of quantum technologies as a science. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to recall the words of Ferro Rubin, an American astronomer who pioneered work on galaxy rotation rates. Uh, Vera Rubin said, for those of uh, you who want to be a scientist, I have one piece of advice. Don't give up. Uh, each of you must believe that you can succeed. It may seem incredible today, but there is no one among you who cannot make an important, significant contribution to the world of science. Science is competitive, aggressive, demanding. It is also imaginative, inspiring, uplifting. You can do it too. Each of you can change the world because you are made of stellar matter and you are connecting with the universe. Uh, this gives me strength, desire and inspiration to move on, to conquer new scientific heights, to make discoveries and that I am proud of. Uh, it makes me happy in the universe. Thank you for your attention. I'm so, so glad to be part of such an incredible community.